Okay, let's do one more big whack example here with a little bit of flavor on it. Right? We have a corporation that has 10,000 bonds outstanding with a 6% annual coupon rate. The, bond, the, the bonds have eight years to maturity, a $1,000 face value, and an $1,100 market price. The company's 100,000 shares of preferred stock pay a $3 annual dividend, and they sell for $30 per share. The company's 500,000 shares of common stock sell for $25 per share and have a beta of 1.5. The risk-free rate is 4%. The market return is 12%. The marginal tax rate is 40%. And we need to find out what the company's weighted average cost of capital is. So notice that we're a little more complicated than the first example because we have three sources of financing, but Practically, all this means is we need to adjust our formula and add a third term to the weighted average cost of capital to account for the cost and weight of preferred shares. So just like before, we need to do a couple of things. First, we need to solve for the values of the source of capital so that we can solve for the weights of each source of capital. Then we estimate the cost of each source of capital and finally plug all of that in to the WAC formula to calculate our cost of capital. Right. So we'll start with the market weights, right. or sorry, the market values of each source of capital. And we've got three different sources of capital and to calculate the market value of all of them, we're just gonna multiply the number of securities that we have times the price per security. So for debt, that is gonna be the number of bonds, and we have 10,000 bonds outstanding, times the price per bond, and each bond is selling for $1,100. So that gives us a market value, total market value of debt of $11 million. Then we have common equity, right, which I will still denote as E. And for equity, we have the number of shares. The security is a share times the price per share. The company has 500,000 common shares and they sell for $25 a share, which gives us a market value of common equity of 12.5 million. And then finally, we have preferred shares. And the firm has 100,000 shares of preferred stock. And those preferred shares are trading for $30 per share for a total market value of preferred equity of $3 million. <coughs> now, the market value of the firm is the sum of the market value of its equity, debt, and preferred shares so we add all these together and get a total market value of the firm of $26.5 million. Now we can come over here and we can calculate the capital structure weights, which, is the, which are the relative proportions of the firm that are owned or, uh, or provided by each source of capital. So we'll start with debt. And the market value of debt divided by the market value of the firm is 11 million divided by 26.5 million, which tells me that 41.51% of the firm has been financed using debt. The market value of equity divided by the market value of the firm is 12.5 divided by 26.5, or 47.17% of the firm that has been financed using equity, common equity. Finally, preferred shares, the market value of preferred divided by the market value of the firm is 3 million divided by 26.5 million. And that means that 11.32% of the firm has been financed using preferred equity. Now we can always check our work at, that, at this stage and make sure that our capital structure weights sum to one, right? because all of the capital needs to be accounted for here. We can't be short or greater than one. This is the sum of all the firm's capital. Once we have our correct weights and we've checked that they add to one, 
We can move on to calculating or estimating the cost of each source of capital. Again, I'll start with the cost of debt, which is the uh, yield to maturity on the firm's debt. Right? And we denote that with RD. We solve for the yield to maturity by estimating the IY for this in the calculator. So we start with the face value of 1,000. Present value is the firm's price or the bond's price, which is 1,100. N is the years remaining to maturity, and there are eight years to maturity. This is an annual coupon bond, so we don't have to adjust. We just have eight years. The payment is the coupon rate or the coupon payment, and it's going to be an annual coupon payment. 6% annual coupon rate times the face value of 1000 gives me a $60 per year coupon. I solve for the yield to maturity by computing the IY for the bond, and I get 4.48%. And this is already at an annual rate, so I have my cost of debt. I can solve for the cost of equity, common equity. which we denote as RE. And the cost of common equity is the expected return on the firm's stock. So the expected return of anything is, according to the capital asset pricing model, equal to the risk-free rate plus the beta of the asset minus times the market risk premium, which is the expected return on the market minus the risk-free rate. Now we're given all of this in the, for, in the, in the setup to the problem. The risk-free rate is given to be 4%. The beta of the stock, 1.5. The market return is 12%, which means I need to calculate my market risk premium by subtracting the risk-free rate of 4%. That gives me a expected return on the common equity of 16%, which is my cost of equity. Finally, I have my cost of preferred stock or preferred equity, which we'll denote as R sub P. And you'll have to think and go back to the, the slides and lectures from the stock chapter if you don't remember this, but preferred shares are, uh, we can calculate the, the cost of preferred shares as the dividend divided by the price. And the dividend paid is $3, and the price is $30. And that gives us a cost of preferred of 10%. Last step is to plug all of this in and solve for the weighted average cost of capital. And the WAC formula tells us to multiply the weight of each source of capital by the cost of each source of capital. So we'll start with debt here, and we'll say that debt is... 41.51% of the capital in the firm. Multiply that by its cost, which is the yield to maturity. And the yield to maturity is 4.48%. And then we have to remember Sorry, we have to remember to include one minus the firm's tax rate to account for the interest tax shield that we get when we finance using debt. Next, preferred shares. So we add the weight of preferred shares, which is 47.17%, times the cost of equity, which is 16%. And then finally, we add a term for the preferred shares, and their preferred shares make up 11.32% of the firm and have a cost of preferred equity of 10%. Do our algebra correctly, watch our order of operations again, and we get 0.098 or 9.8% for the weighted average cost of capital for this firm.